Welcome to the Inquisitive Engineer. In this video, I'm going to share my thoughts on why the leaked transcripts for the Titan Submersible are completely bogus. My main reason why these are completely bogus is based on the principles of buoyancy. So what are the principles of buoyancy? Well, let's take this gallon of water, for example. This gallon of water weighs roughly 8.34 pounds and takes up 231 cubic inches. In the metric system, one liter of water is one kilogram, which is a volume of 1,000 cubic centimeters. For an object to float in this gallon of water, it could weigh the exact same 8.34 pounds, but it has to occupy more than 231 cubic inches. And for an object to sink, it could weigh the exact same amount as this gallon of water, again, the 8.34 pounds, but it has to take up less volume than 231 cubic inches. Based on these principles, the Titan submersible weighing around 23,000 pounds or 10,500 kilograms based on some internet sources would have to displace around 2,750 gallons of water or 10,500 liters of water to be neutrally buoyant. Now, in the design phase of the Titan submersible, the engineers are going to assume the volume of the submersible as planned and the density of the titanium and the composite materials and all the other structures that get attached and come up with an estimate on the density of the Titan submersible. And they're going to want to err on the lighter side because it's easier to add heavy ballast than it would be to somehow remove weight or add ballast that is less dense than water. And once the Titan submersible has been assembled, you can go ahead and take it out into the ocean and slowly start adding ballast and until it just barely starts to sink. At this point, you are now neutrally balanced. From there, you can go ahead and start adding some additional weight and start measuring your rate of descent. To And eventually, once you get to your desired rate of descent, you can determine how much ballast that was. And now you can start back engineering your multi-ballast safety systems. So, for example, if 100 kilograms got the Titan submersible from a neutrally buoyant state to a rate of descent that was desirable, we can start designing ballast back from that. If we want the rate of ascent to be the same as the rate of descent, and 100 kilograms got us the desired rate of descent, then my removable ballast at the deep sea should be 200 kilograms. That 200 kilograms would offset the 100 kilograms that it took us to descend and get us back to a neutrally buoyant point plus the 100 kilograms to get us in the ascent at the same rate as descent. So can we go ahead and estimate just how much the different ballast weighed on the Titan submersible? In fact, we can. There is a video out from CBS News correspondent David Pug, who actually went on a dive expedition with Ocean Gate, and they particularly talk about the attachment of eight sandbags that weigh 36 pounds each, or roughly 16 kilograms. They are attached with a dissolvable thread, and in the case that all the occupants are passed out, after about 16 hours, these threads dissolve, the sandbags drop, and the dropping of the eight sandbags is more than enough to go from a descending net force to an ascending net force. So not only do you have the sandbags as a method to go from a sinking force to an ascending force, they also have the triple weights which were hydraulically disengaged. So those also are probably going to have to weigh around 280 pounds or 125 kilograms. Then they also have the roll weights. 
and the roll weights, the passengers and seated side have to get towards one side of the submersible and get it tilted, and these weights will eventually roll off one side. So there's another set of ballast that probably are going to weigh in the ballpark of the 280 pounds or the 125 kilograms. And then also in the transcript, they talk about trying to jettison the frame. And if you look at the frame, this thing is massive compared to the, the triple weights that are hung and the sandbags that are hung. As you can see in this picture, the attachment of the frame to the hull is actually a tapered groove. And this is exactly what I would expect from an engineering standpoint if you wanted to make a quick and routinely releasable frame in the case of an emergency. Now, if you go ahead and look at this frame compared to the triple weights that are in the picture, this frame is massive in comparison. And if these triple weights are going to weigh 250 pounds or more, and that's say 125 pounds on the left, 125 pounds on the right, this frame is going to easily weigh much more than that. Let's just say conservatively that the frame weighs 750 pounds or 340 kilograms. So now I have three potential ballasts that I can get rid of in emergency. <clears throat> There's the roll weights that are probably gonna weigh 250 pounds plus. There is the triple weights that are gonna weigh around 250 pounds plus. And then there is the frame that we could jettison. And if we say that weighs 750 pounds, if we add all those up, that's gonna be around 1,250 pounds. The fact that the Titan barely rose 40 meters in the last 16 minutes after potentially expelling 1,250 pounds of ballast is just crazy. The only way that that Titan submersible would not have rose if they jettisoned all that ballast was if they took on almost an equal amount of water. Well, 1,250 pounds of water is equal to about 150 gallons. That is an extreme amount of water that the Titan submersible also would have had to taken on instantaneously. I did this couldn't have been a slow leak because if it was a slow leak of water intrusion, the sub would have eventually started to rise, but then the rate of ascent would continue to slow down. Well, there's nowhere in the Titan submersible for this water to go other than into the pressure vessel itself with the passengers, yet this entire transcript never mentions anything that water was quickly coming into the pressure vessel. That is why, hands down, this transcript is just flat out bogus. Then you can even add on more things. Well, you have the thrusters that can provide additional force out. There's also the air bladders that would be typically used for neutral buoyancy. Once you got to the bottom of the ocean, you could very, very fine tune the buoyancy of the submersible with the air bladders. So you add on the ability to use both the thrusters and the air bladders as additional forces of propulsion to rise to the surface, the Titan submersible would have to take on even more water. Yeah. So there you have it. I, th this transcript is just not true in any way, shape, or form. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. If you're curious about more details on the Titan submersible, I put the link to my other videos in the description. Stay curious, everybody.